It was announced over the weekend that Representative Katie Hill, a new representative from our state of California, is in fact going to be resigning as a result of a scandal that she has found herself embroiled in as a result of an ex-husband and some right-wing news sites. So I wanna give you all the details first, a comment from Representative Katie Hill who said, it is with a broken heart that today I announce my resignation from Congress. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but I believe it is the best thing for my constituents, my community, and our country. California Democrats announcement Sunday that she would resign comes after the House Ethics Committee opened an investigation of allegations that she was romantically involved with her legislative director, a relationship that would violate House ethics rules and that Hill denied. Understand that the reason we know about this is because of a conservative news site and a British tabloid that published nude photos of Hill without her consent. But they're just fine, she's resigning, but they're gonna do okay. They probably made quite a bit of money off of it actually. Right. And so it's weird how that works out in society. We have a lot more on this obviously, but what do you think initially about the fact that she is resigning because of this? Uh, I mean, I get it, I understand it. This is mortifying, this is embarrassing. She wants it to end and it's also, she feels like, um, and this is something that Republicans don't do. When we've seen so many Republicans absolutely uh, ruin their families when they have crazy things going on in their past and they would rather, go into a confirmation hearing knowing that it's all gonna be exposed mm -hmm. because they want the job. This is like the absolute opposite of Kavanaugh. Like mm -hmm. just be willing to embarrass your whole family because you want this job. And I think she's probably feels like the work is most important and she'll step down and that's unfortunate. I also think it's very important for us to be um, completely honest about what, at least what we know what happened here is that there, there was no ethics violation. She mm -hmm. was seeing someone and then that person worked on her campaign. Well, that apparently is a, an ethics violation. Having an affair with a subordinate is actually against the A campaign worker rules. though, no it's not. It has to be, it has to be not a campaign worker she, though. She right? acknowledged, so let, let's move okay, on with a little bit more graphics. Hill has acknowledged both aspects of her case previously saying she knows even a consensual relationship with a subordinate is inappropriate. While vowing Sunday to mount a legal fight regarding the leak of intimate photos, she's accused her abusive husband with whom she is undergoing a contentious divorce of engaging in a smear campaign built around cyber exploitation, saying he enlisted hateful political operatives to help. The nude photos were published by the conservative site Red State and the Daily Mail. So um, previously that sort of relationship would not have violated any sort of ethics violations, but actually some of the, the rules changes that came about as a result of the Me Too movement have changed it so that even consensual relationships with a subordinate um, in your office or campaign is against. But is it in your office? I want your to be campaign, clear. I think it's just in your office. She, well, she's saying it was against the rules. Okay. I'm not, I, I also want to be very clear. I don't, don't care. Right, exactly. I don't care at all. But I'm just saying what I've read is that she hired someone that she was seeing. Yeah. I just well, I mean, they like would argue that that could be against yeah. ethics rules. Then um, I, I look. I, I really don't care. But also, it's hard to we should acknowledge. You don't want it. Right. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Representative Duncan Hunter, also California representative, uh, we found out he's under investigation right now for a number of different felonies. He apparently spent money to help cover up an affair that he was having. Mm -hmm. That's not against the rules. Apparently, he's totally. He's still in Congress. He's doing just fine with all that money he stole from his donors. Uh, you know, stole pretending he was spending it in support of the troops, spending it to fly a rabbit around the country. That's a thing. Uh, that people do when they're corrupt, um, spending the money to hide affairs, all that's totally fine. He's cool, Katie Hill is going off down that dusty path. So that's weird, I think that's really weird. Um, and I get that ethics rules are really important because for they are really for important. all yeah. of our nation's history, politicians have gotten away with sometimes literally murder. Um, but like she, it was a consensual relationship. I, I feel like she could have stuck it out and like gone through the investigation. Would the investigation have concluded with them saying you're banned from the House of Representatives? So I, I don't I, think so. I, I do not like live by the rule that because it was a consensual relationship that um, bosses should be seeing their I subordinates. Agree. But they were seeing each other before this person got hired on her campaign. It, it yes. almost seemed like it was just like, oh, I trust you. This is a mm -hmm. good idea. I think you'd be great for this role. You want this role. But so the, the counterpoint would be then right? you're, you're using campaign funds to pay someone that you have a relationship with, right, which right. is a different sort of right. ethics violation, which I, I totally get. And look, you inherently have power over one of your subordinates. Even once you bring them in, you then have power in the workplace over them. And I'm trying to think like it's it's sort of novel to this case that she's a woman because normally in these sorts of cases it's men that are that are committing these sorts of mm -hmm. violations and if it was some random like if it was Gates or something 
and it turned out that he was having a relationship with someone he was paying, I would wonder to what extent the word consensual really applies when you have power over the future of a person's career. Not only in your office, but hypothetically in politics. If you're an influential person in Republican circles or Democratic circles or whatever circles you're in, you have a lot of power over the future of that person's relationship. So where do we go here? Like we already know that like women, black people, Democrats have different rules than white male Republicans. Mm -hmm. um, is well, there there definitely seems to be a different <laughs> willingness to step down between Democrats and Republicans. I mean, Al Franken stepped down. Well, he should have. Yeah, but but he did. I'm yeah, saying he, he did. did what he should have done. If he was a Republican, would yeah. he have? Probably not, but he still should have. I mean, Donald Trump is yeah. president right now. He faces 200 different women with a variety and of different accusations from shouldn't be ogling president. to literal rape. And there's no consequences whatsoever. It's not just right. not being president. I mean, I don't know what other consequences there could be, but there's nothing. Right. There's literally nothing. And so again, this is a thing where like, where I was saying about Mark Zuckerberg and lying last year, if one side holds to a standard and the other side doesn't, then they are going to benefit. They're gonna hold their positions, they're going to, like Roy Moore, he, he very narrowly lost that election. If he was a Democrat, he probably would have stepped down after it came to light that he was apparently like, pre, like a predator for little girls for years and years and years. But with a Republican, like he almost won, and if he had won, do you think that the Republicans would have thrown him out? That they wouldn't have let him vote on judicial appointments and those sorts of things? Like, It really sucks when you have a standard that you're trying to apply to everyone, but only half of the, the only half of the political spectrum abides by it, and the other half doesn't because they know that their voters don't care. Right, it does. We still have to have those standards. I just don't know if I feel like this situation, if I would even be calling for that on the opposite side. I, I mm -hmm. you know, I this seems like, and that's why if we, she'd had the investigation, we could have maybe we could have worked it out. Yeah. But she's stepping down, which again- We like can't expect her to want to put her family through all this, put herself yeah, through this. I, I mean, this that. has gone to nude photos yeah, being yeah. published internationally. And so she said about that, having private photos of personal moments weaponized against me has been an appalling invasion of my privacy. It's also illegal and we're currently pursuing all of our available legal options. It's just, yeah. it's disgusting for anyone, for politicians, yeah. for anyone. And the fact that if, if you believe what she's saying, that her husband is behind this. I mean, the fact that they're gonna get away probably legally with the, the publishing of the photos to put pressure on her, that these right wing sites who would never care at all if it was a Republican that did this, that they're targeting her. Remember, it was a right wing site that was publishing literal fake nude photos of AOC earlier this year. They love this stuff. And again, bear in mind, they're the values voters on that side, but they love this stuff. And so, look, she probably did violate some rules. I would have liked, again, it's not on her to force, to be forced to go through the investigation, but I don't know how it would have ended up in the in the end, and it sucks that really dishonest, horrible people who are behind this thing have really succeeded. They've gotten what they wanted out of this. Yeah, I agree. And that doesn't feel like justice, even if she did violate the rules. Um, but one I'm more quote I want to so read. I'm sure she did. I'm, I'm saying she said she that. did. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, she said it's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. No. I'm not either okay. way. All right. One, well, one final quote. I don't this even from, know what we're disagreeing about here. I'm sorry. Uh, that, that just feels icky, the entire thing. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, so, this is Jill Filipovic, author of The H Spot, The Feminist Pursuit of Happiness, who write, writes It's important to have consistent standards and say that sexual relationships with underlings are not appropriate, whether the boss is male or female. Mm -hmm. But if we care about gender equality and the ability for women to fully participate in the public sphere, the sexualized attacks against Hill are the most pressing matter. And let's not pretend. That there won't be different standards or different availability of ammunition or different many things with women than with men. Right. And so these rules were set up in the wake of Me Too, but they might end up being deployed more against women than against men, which again doesn't really feel just at the end of the day. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.